Mm, it is the morning cryptos and welcome to day 19 of my new 90 day challenge to go deep deep into the bitcoin rabbit hole and maybe even climb out of it with some profits we'll see if that's possible we'll see what's going on stick around let's start the music Well, Bitcoin is uh, attempting to recover, maybe, I hope. <laughs> um, yeah, well, luckily at this point, we have stayed above this danger zone down here, which would definitely freak me out if it went down too, but which people seem to be calling for. So we'll see. Uh, let's go to uh, Bitcoin News. Uh, let's just do Bitcoin news and see what's going on. Morgan Stanley now clearing Bitcoin futures for clients, helping institutions gain something or other. As Bitcoin sinks, Crypto Brothers party hard on a blockchain cruise. Bitcoin tsunami will come from Japan, political economist to RT. Okay, I don't know. This is interesting. Morgan Stanley is now clearing Bitcoin futures for clients, helping institutions gain exposure. What does that mean? Now, Goldman Sachs is no longer the sole Wall Street firm doing so. Morgan Stanley joins Goldman Sachs, TD Ameritrade, E-Trade, and others in clearing CME and CBOE Bitcoin futures. The reaction of the Bitcoin community has been divided over the creation of regulated Bitcoin futures, with some suggesting manipulation of the underlying Bitcoin market. However, it's clear that the more Wall Street firms that get involved in anything related to Bitcoin, the more legitimacy it gives to digital currency. Really? I don't, I don't see it that way, but okay. Yeah. Given indications that institutional investors may be starting to play a much greater role in the Bitcoin markets, this is significant. If such institutions become interested in acquiring Bitcoin, the price will certainly soar. That's what that's what we all been have been telling ourselves. Indeed, Coinbase is targeting just such clients with their Coinbase custody product. Coinbase CEO Brian Armstrong believes institutional investors may be ready to invest as much as $10 billion. Okay, and his quote is, I wouldn't say it's been a lot of activity, but it's for core institutional clients who want to participate, participate in a derivatives transaction. Okay. I, you know, I really, I'm at the point where I've learned enough about banks and done enough research about banks. <laughs> To kind of want them to not participate. I wish they would just go away, right? And just let us do our thing. <laughs> but no, they got to come in and ruin everything for the rest of us. <laughs> there were quite a few uh, pretty legitimate YouTubers talking about how the timing of of the uh, the crash here, this big drop from, uh, I don't know when it was, or this drop, whatever, was really timed perfectly to the the expiration of the Bitcoin futures contract so that the these big players could make money on the short side. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know enough about it to know whether that's just speculation or actually some truth to it. But the bottom line is these the bankers have absolutely no uh, moral or ethical considerations. They're just money-making machines, and so they will do whatever they want to do. Um, and however it affects the rest of us, who knows? Uh, and it's been pretty clear that the stuff going on in South Korea was totally, you know, manipulated so that some government insiders could actually sell their positions before 
the announcement that they're shutting down crypto in South Korea, and then they can buy their shit back uh, a lot cheaper. So uh, this market is manipulatable, people. It's still small enough, so it's manipulatable. So uh, interesting stuff. Uh, hopefully we will recover, and hopefully uh, we will get back on our our ride. Uh, another quote that kind of sticks in my mind before I get going is um, this this Twitter guy, Joseph Young. Um, okay, this, this really hit me. And I just want to read it to you guys. It really struck deep in my soul. <laughs> Joseph Young said, when cryptocurrencies go up, you are all experts, PhDs in blockchain science. When cryptocurrencies go down, it's the fault of the market, the government, and whoever advised you to buy. And he said, I do not give investment advice for the thousandth time. And that's cool. But the thing is, um, this is new for a lot of us. And we are emotionally moved when the markets are rising because there's no place else where we, the little guy, can get those kind of returns. And, of course, it gets us excited. It gets people investing. It gets people wanting to join the crowd. And then there is the danger in that the crowd doesn't always think logically or rationally. In fact, it never thinks logically or rationally. And that's where the opportunity is. But it takes a certain amount of expertise and, and training to learn how to operate in this crowd, in this market, in this environment. So I just want you guys to be patient with yourselves. I don't know, you know where you are in all this, but this has been a week where I've had to really work on being patient with myself. And as a, you know, a new investor here, it's, it's been less than a year, um, you know, this has been a valuable learning experience because in my, now in my body experience as a kinesthetic learner, I know that the, these markets can take dumps, right? And to be ready for those with some cash somewhere, I got to get me a cash, you know, surplus backup war chest someplace so that when these markets dump, you can run in and time it well and get some bargains to really, you know, because I think it was Data Dash that said this really, I think, really well. Don't be greedy at the top. Be greedy when things fall and you're going in and getting bargains, right? That's a paraphrase, but I think that was wise, wise words. And that's the shift in my trading. Um, and the question remains, I don't know if I can even be good at this when in the markets are rocking. It feels like I could be good at this, but when we have a big setback like this, my old stuff comes up of, oh, you know, see, there you go. You thought you could be good with money, da -da -da -da, right? That's limiting beliefs. That's just your own hypnosis. So be careful what you're saying to yourself during this week. Be careful and be engaged in something that you also love to do as much as this. And uh, talking to some some of the folks on my team, it's like we're like, you know what? It's not time to quit our day jobs yet, right? But that's okay. We are doing day jobs that we like, right? So you want to have a day job that you like in addition to trading. You want to have some other options. Uh, unless you're so good at it and you are you have enough experience that you can really go, you know what? I think I can I can take money out of this market, whether it's up or down, sideways, morning, noon, and night, you know, but that takes experience. And the only way you're going to get experience is to not always do it correctly or not always do it in a way that you would have liked to have done it, right? So that's some honest hypnosis for you today, the, uh, the hypnosis of money, which is actually what this is really all about. And it's one area that I actually do have some expertise in. And I know that these markets are hypnosis. Hold on, I got a drink. It's one of my workout routines. Just hold a cup of coffee for 10 minutes. All right, so let's grind through these. Let's take a peek at the one day and the one hour here on Bitcoin. And, you know, I it doesn't look too uh, lively a recovery to me. <laughs> but what do I know? Uh, I'm hoping it's lively. Um, I don't know. It just, 
I hope I'm wrong, but it just feels like there's not much energy here on the one hour chart. And uh, let's look at the RSI real quick. I mean, we have hit down below the 30 on the one hour RSI. And it's kind of hanging in the middle here. So we'll see. I mean, there's there's nothing else to, you know, there's no magic, magic wand or crystal ball here. Um, you know, we had a really, really hot market that has cooled and it needed to cool. It's just it didn't make an appointment with us to cool when we were ready for it to cool, right? But that's that's reality. So let's grind down through them. Bitcoin Cash. Nice little recovery. You know, we actually didn't go down too horribly low. I mean, we went down to the to support. And we're kind of snugging down here at support. And, uh, you know, there's plenty of room for it to go on the upside. Come on. Come on, Bitcoin Cash. Come on. <laughs> right? Uh, but I'm, I'm actually reassured that it didn't totally, you know, go in the gutter. It didn't go down to 400. Right? So we'll take our positivity any way we can get it. Let's just look real quick at the one hour. Yeah, not looking that, uh, I mean, it's somewhat of a rise, but again, I'm not seeing a whole lot of energy there. Let's grind down through these here. Go to the one day chart. Bitcoin, Bitcoin gold, not much on the RSI, it's kind of in the middle. Um, see, I still like this pattern, you know, and again, this I like the way Bitcoin Gold does these little spikes um, because it gives you the ability to get in down here, ride it up, and get out. But who knows what it'll do this time, right? So, but at least it looks a little livelier than than Bitcoin Cash. Let's look at the one hour chart. You know, it's it seems like it's recovering, maybe. <laughs> All right, let's go to Dash. Just grind through this. And people, by the way, I'm not here to give you any expert advice. This is what I do every morning, and I'm just sharing it. This is a vlog. This is a journal. This is me documenting learning how to trade. Um, and essentially, I started learning to trade on July 31st when I got tangled up in a bunch of Ponzi schemes, and they all went out one after the other. Boom, 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 boom. And uh, this week, we had the beautiful and uh, lovely and brilliantly designed Ponzi scheme called BitConnect uh, shut down. And, um, and you'll notice anytime that Bitcoin has taken a dump, uh, BitConnect has run into trouble, right? Interesting stuff. Uh, so I was like, okay, there's no easy way. There's only work. You have to work. You have to actually get in, roll up your sleeves, and learn how to trade this shit before you can really learn how to invest in it. Because it's only in trading that you get to know the ins and outs, the breadth of this market. And so that's what I decided to do. So uh, that was, you know, a 90-day challenge. It was actually my third one um, or my fourth one. No, it was my, I don't know. But anyway, I'm doing another one. And my goal this time is much bigger. Um, and so far, it looks like I'm not getting very close to it. But <laughs> you got to have a big goal. So Dash, another little recovery here in Dash. Uh, okay, let's look at EOS. EOS, pretty nice, nice little recovery. And it never went below its, its trend line. That to me, that's solid. That's solid, and, and EOS is one of my long-term holds. I'm definitely a hodler on EOS, and every time I decide I want to sell it, uh, it's in my Exodus wallet, and I it just doesn't the <laughs> it doesn't work right, which is good. It's been keeping me from just I would have taken my profits here at 18 and definitely run, but I'm going to hang on to my EOS because it hasn't even launched yet, so. Not a bad time to think about EOS. Um, 
you know, obviously you don't want to buy it on an up day, and it's actually looking like it's going to be an up day. But the next time it comes back down to this line, I might get some more. Uh, let's look at Ethereum. Uh, right down to the line, and it's recovering nicely. IOTA hasn't quite gotten back up to the line, <laughs> but that's okay. It's still early in the IOTA project as well. Litecoin. Not a bad time to buy Litecoin below 200. Uh, I think that could be a good move, but we'll see. We might we might still be in a slide. You know, that's the thing we don't know. And uh, the minute you buy, you've committed. So the thing I'm learning is to not to, to I'm learning to ladder in, and also learning about placing orders below the market. So those are some of the things that this particular correction has taught me. Those are some strategies that I'll be implementing in the future. Um, Neo here looks like it's recovering nicely. And we might have an update today. Who knows? Omise Go. Starting to feel a little more positive here. Omise Go. Um, looking okay. Looking good. Quantum. Quantum looks like it wants to get back up to its line, but it hasn't quite gotten back up to its line. Again, a good spot to get you some quantum. Um, I've done pretty well a couple of times getting in at 50. <laughs> I, I got in at 50 over here and I got out over there and then I got back in at 50 thinking I was a smart son of a gun uh, but I'm still learning um, yeah so quantum looking like it could come back Monero looking like it could come back I mean it it has a nice steady trend line Monero um, and it fell below it fell below that trend line, but not by much, and it looks like it wants to get back in, get back in the saddle. Yeah, that's really, you know, and sometimes things dip below the average, right? And this is a crude visual average, but it's still sort of an average. Let's look at Ripple XRP, which is not actually Ripple. XRP is the currency owned by Ripple, and there's like a hundred billion of these suckers, and they have, they're holding most of them, but they could release them at any time, but hopefully not today. Um, Ripple has recovered three straight days of up, boom, but today, I guess it's Friday, so I guess the whole thing happened Wednesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or no, yeah. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Okay, there's, there's where we are. Ha, gar, 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 gar. So I want to see a sideways trading range on Monero, on uh, Ripple before I get involved, and preferably a sideways trading range on the one-day chart, not just the one-hour chart. Um, but I think, I think money's going to come back into this market with a roar. I just don't, I don't have any... I don't have any uh, reasonable, logical statistics to back that up. There's just a feeling I have, right? Uh, Zcash, um, you know, had itself a little correction, but it's it's uh, hanging back in, getting back up. So the thing is, if if I had had a war chest, you know, if I have a discipline where I take a profit on every trade and take some of that profit and stick it in uh, the US dollar wallet, let's say at Coinbase or um, US dollar tether, which I'm not crazy about, or uh, into some project that is really liquid and that is pretty stable. I can't say what that might be, but then when markets are down, then you have a pool to get bargains from. So that's a big piece of the puzzle that I didn't really consider because um, I didn't want to have cash sitting on the side, not earning, not growing, right? But ultimately, in order to really crank your crypto, you got to have a reserve. You got to have some money on the side that you can bring in when the markets take a dump. That's the big learning from this week. And what's that worth? That's tuition, people. 
So the mistakes I've made are really paying for themselves. At least that's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> but you know what? That's hypnosis. What are you telling yourself, right? What are you telling yourself when the markets take a crash? Are you a victim of the evil South Korean finance ministers? You know, are you a victim of Wall Street or are you a victim of not having enough experience? And that you can change, right? That's within your control. So ultimately, that's what this is all about, is learning how to, to focus on the things you can change and the things you can control. And, you know, and all that wisdom of learning the difference kind of stuff is what experience gives us. Mm. So yeah, so today it's less about what the market's doing and more about what are your thoughts doing in your mind. Uh, just a quick look at Cardano. We have a nice bit of recoveryishness on the one day chart in the US dollar tether. We've got to go to a one hour chart here. That's nice. That's Cardano to me is another project that I really believe in long term. And they obviously have to prove themselves, but they seem like they're set up to do it. Um, and so watch some videos by Charles Hoskinson and his team. They have these whiteboard uh, YouTube videos. And they're willing to talk about what they're doing. And that's, I think, a really good uh, low-key marketing strategy to just don't sell to us. Just tell us what the, the hell is going on. Let us, let us into your world a little bit. I was also impressed with the, uh, the CEO of 10X. Um, and hopefully 10X is doing pretty well. Uh, so Cardano, looking pretty good. And to me, that's that's the project that I have the most, the most in. Um, and I did ladder in as it went down. You know, so I'm in at a dollar. I'm in at like 85. And then I'm in at 75. And we're not too far away from, from where I am. Uh, so hopefully that recovery will come. And the next time I will have some funds on the side to, uh, to grab it when it goes really low. And uh, the other project I want to just look at real quick is Basic Attention Token. I use the Brave Browser. Go ahead and check it out. Check out Basic Attention Token and the Brave Browser and start using it. And if you like my videos, you can actually send me Basic Attention Token to my YouTube channel. Um, and then we can just do away with all these freaking ads on YouTube, which um, I think it's time to do. So that's it. I'm looking at a lot of others. Just since I mentioned 10x, let's see if I can find a chart here. It's a, uh, it's a Bitcoin chart. So that's 10x against Bitcoin. Um, I'm not sure where 10x is here. Get a, I want to look at a U.S. dollar chart just to get my head around it. World Coin Index. I like it better in some ways than uh, Coin Market Cap, but it's definitely slower. All right, so 10x. We had serious drop, but it has recovered. But unfortunately, it's lower <laughs> than when I got into it. But that's okay. I think it's going to come back. It's a good project, and I think it has a really good team and some very interesting volume down here. We have spikes. Interesting. I haven't seen that before. Um, so, yeah. So, TEDx has a good program of keeping in touch with people like you and me and letting us know what the hell is going on. So, um, that's it for today. There's a lot more people. There's always more. This is a world that really is worth exploring and learning in. And just remember, it doesn't always go our way. And that's a valuable, valuable tool for everything else in life. Because life doesn't always go our way. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you can uh, look back on the week and go, yeah, I made it through a pretty intense week. And I didn't get depressed. I didn't jump off a bridge. I didn't beat myself up. I focused on, you know, some of the other income producing projects that I work on. In fact, my, my new CD should come today. Um, 
that I've been kind of not paying much attention to because I was playing with this so much. So a little life balance comes back in. You get a little wake up call and go, you know, there's more to life than just cryptos. And there's more to life than pretty much just any one thing. So hopefully that will get you through the weekend and hopefully we'll have a great recovery here today. I really, really appreciate you guys and I appreciate you taking the time and uh, the time to listen, the time to watch. And thanks for your comments. And I'm a little behind on my comments, but I'll get to them. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Peace, grooviness. Over now, give me a thumbs up if you like this. Please subscribe if you're new. And let's start the music. Music.